Hello and welcome back to the channel and today special guest David Curtin from the Heritage Party has joined me. Hello David. Hello. <laughs> We're in Worthing where I live and you're only up the road in Bognor aren't That's you? That's right yeah so easy journey here. <laughs> and we thought we'd just have a little stroll along the prom and uh, and basically have a chat. Yeah that's right there's lots to talk about isn't there? <laughs> the lovely Julia my wonderful partner is acting as camera lady aren't you Julia? Yes, she's nodding, <laughs> nodding the camera. So she's got to walk backwards. So uh, this is all like, you know, proper stuff. Yeah. So David, we were on, I had you on the show. Um, yeah, that was really oh, good. A couple really... of months ago now. Yeah, it? it was, it was, I know. But you've done so many things since then. Oh my goodness, yeah. the channel has just gone ballistic since then. Yeah, yeah. But more importantly, we were talking about the forthcoming elections mm. and um, the candidates and heritage and what your yeah. party stood for which was brilliant mm. of course we've had the local elections now for yeah. how did that go for the heritage party oh, it was good actually i mean we had 64 candidates standing at borough and district level and we had one candidate standing to be mayor of bedford oh right um so we had many many more than we've ever had before yes we've, well, we've only been going for three years so well, it's all, yes, you know so that's not very long but yeah we've nearly doubled our vote share this year over last year so you you know that's fantastic so we're making really good progress and oh, well, that's really good yeah so the, the ethos of your party really speaks I, I mean I can't think of anyone who wouldn't be interested in the stuff that you talk about because it's family related mm. it's heritage of course in this country and it's a lot of stuff that um, is blatantly missing mm. from a lot of the other parties. Yeah, right. And we got a lot of comments when people are here about us. They love our manifesto and what we stand for. It's a full thing. It's 30 pages long if you read it. But yeah, I mean, we're specifically set up to be a socially conservative party and also financially conservative as well. And you don't have that right. from any of the other parties because, you know, I call the Tories now the fake conservatives because yes. they've just gone so far away from being conservative. Conservative, you know, there's no difference between them and the parties on the hard left these days. So people are really crying out for an alternative. Uh, we're, we're getting known. So, you yes. know, the thing is, because we're new and we haven't got huge amounts of money, <laughs> we don't have no, a big a... corporate donor, which in a way is good because we're not, um, You're not beholden. In the pockets of anyone. Exactly. Yeah. We, we can be free. You know, I have been offered some money. There's a hint of a lot of money coming from somewhere. But the cost of that would be I had to take a position on Middle East politics right. and I stay out of Middle East yeah. politics. So they're like, oh, if you support a certain group, a certain nation, then we'll get lots of money. But I'm not interested in that. I'm it's, concerned about this country. Not yeah, a, a it's funny you should say that mm. because running a YouTube channel, it's a very similar thing. You mm. get a lot of people who would say we'd love to sponsor you, mm. which is nice except that it always comes with that extra little mm. bit that you've got to promote a product that you may not be happy yeah, with. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, one of the things that I thought would be worth having a chat with, and we both said this, there's a lot of issues in the world at the mm. moment, and I know my audience have been following me questioning all of that. Um, one of the things I haven't touched upon, of course, is, um, and there's a number of subjects I haven't touched upon because I'm, I am a bit nervous of them, and that is the transgender. Mm. Um, business what's what's your feeling on this situation well i'm not nervous about talking about <laughs> it at all i've been speaking I... about it for ages because oh, okay. it's absolutely crazy yes you know the first time i even really heard of it was when i was um at it, in visiting a school actually back in the brexit days 2017 and um I was just talking about Brexit and someone said to me, uh, you're transphobic, aren't you? Don't you understand how your attitudes are hurtful to uh, heteronormativity or something like that? I don't know. What. Heteronormativity? Yeah. <laughs> so like, so there's a you know, word for like you. They're, what is it? They're, they're, they're grounding and continuing this heteronormativity, which apparently is offensive and um, oh, right. and all this. I don't know what I'm talking about. I'd better about. be offended by it. Then, yeah. I suppose. So it's like what what on earth is this? So yeah, I mean, I just think it's complete nonsense. This stuff, you know. I mean, but it is. It, it, but it's being pushed, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, that's the worrying mm -hmm. thing. I mean, it it is. I agree with you. It, there's obviously there are some people who um, are 
I forget what the term is. They've got gender dysphoria. Yes, yeah. gender dysphoria. Yeah. You, the lovely Julia knows mm. a lot about this and she tells mm. me um, a, a lot about it. So there's some really gen genuine people, yeah. but it does seem as if there is a a push, an unnecessary push mm. that's turning what could be just a simple fad in kids' lives, yeah. particularly young, mm -hmm. who are questioning their own, well, you know, in the old days, yeah. I'm sure when you and I were young, we were just questioning you know, puberty and what was going yeah, on well, with us. People go through phases, don't yeah. they? And they try things out and whatever, but then that's just a normal part of growing up. And, you know, there was gender dysphoria from when it was, like, recognised as being a condition. But until about 10 years ago, the rates of gender dysphoria were less than about 0.03%, something yeah. very, very low. And it was more common in boys than girls. But now, that's in the last 10 years, it's rocketed. Yes. because it's been propagandized and you've got this idea that you must affirm everybody all the time even if there's a little hint that they just may be going through a yes. phase then that's affirmed as a permanent condition they are transgender and then they need to be referred to a transgender clinic or whatever to get hormone therapy to get cross-sex therapy and ultimately surgery and this is absolutely insane because 98 percent of people roughly that's according to professor Zuck in Canada grow out of gender dysphoria completely normally yes. if they present with it in the teenage years. So it's completely wrong to actually use this affirmation model that the NHS has been using in this country and many other health services and governments around the world have started to adopt it. But th this is actually coming from the UN ultimately. I mean, it's part of Agenda 2030, it's part of the 17 Sustainable Development Goals, one of which is um, gender equality, which people look at that and they think, oh, well, this is equality between men and women. Well, it's not, actually. It's, it's, it's presenting a whole new view that there's loads of different genders, there's 100 different genders, and you can choose which one you are on any day of the week. Yes. And that has to be affirmed and recognised. And if you don't, then that's a hate crime. And, Which, uh, <laughs> and a lot of this seems to be, again, it's that old ploy of, of setting everybody against mm. one another, the yeah. divide and rule. And we're being divided in so many different spheres at the moment. Mm. Um, and not only that, I mean, there's the, the sexuality of children in schools mm. and the, the sex education now of trying to give the impression that children as young as three or four are sexually motivated or should be. Oh, it's appalling, isn't it? It's and absolutely appalling. That, it, it's absolutely appalling. We're going to cross the road and go yeah. into Steen Garden. I'm just going to ask Julia if um, the little green thing is still working properly because <laughs> the camera we're using occasionally has a little mishap. Yeah, um, yeah so that, that's another area that mm. I've had guests on the show talking mm. about. And, and I imagine if the Heritage Party were in, mm. your education system, I'm hoping, would not be trying to sexualise oh, we, We'd scrap that immediately. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it is so terrible. You should let kids be kids. Yeah. I mean, it was bad enough you know, 10 years ago when people were trying to bring these things in to 14, 15 year olds. And then they got this very good phrase. It's a propaganda and neuro-linguistic programming phrase, oh, yeah. age appropriate. So they're like, oh, well, is this age appropriate for 14? 14 year olds but suddenly what was age appropriate from them is suddenly age appropriate for 11 year olds and then seven year olds and then five year olds and four year olds and now you've got four year olds being taught how to touch themselves you know without yep. using more explicit language exactly and, and and the rest you know that's just as you know there's more that, you know that i could go into that i don't want to on a, a video for social media but you can look it up yes and yes. uh it's absolutely terrible it's disgusting now um, i'm going to lift risk life and limb we've got an ambulance standing by so we're all right we're going to dance across I'm, I'm, the road you're, you're getting me too <laughs> too worked up about these things i think the ambulance is coming <laughs> to to take away my stress <laughs> well we certainly don't want that we'll yeah. go in that entrance over there this is um lovely part of uh, worthing yeah, steam yeah. gardens and it's uh, away from everything there's a little statue with running water to calm you down that's david good. that's good <laughs> um so there, these are other areas that we've been divided on. Of course, one of the things that people, I think, are coming together now as the realisation is about these 15-minute cities and mm. the low-traffic um, neighbourhoods, as they euphemistically call them. Mm. They're, they're more like 15-minute ghettos. Right. And, uh, and, you know, you can see it if, if you're awake enough, I think, to, mm. to know that it is more of a, a prison. 
After yeah. all, if you wanted people to be in, a, in an area that was, say, 15 minutes mm. from everything, would you not start putting in all the amenities that you might need? All yeah. the things that would keep people there, rather than cameras and penalty notices. Well, that's exactly it, isn't you it? Know. They're promising you all this wonderful stuff. But they're beating you with a yeah. stick. <laughs> Where are all the schools and the surgeries and the yeah. dental clinics and the gyms that they're promising everybody? They're not being built. No. But they're building these horrible tower blocks everywhere that are so ugly. Yes. And then they're putting in the cameras, like you say, to control the vehicle movements. But, you know, the worry is, and what I've actually heard from some councils under the surface is that they're actually saying well if there's another pandemic this will be very useful because we can keep people in their neighborhoods yes. and we can use the cameras to do that yes and they did bring that in in wales they didn't in england but they did have a five mile restriction and the police were actually checking them so it was far more restrictive in wales than yes. england they and would want to do I that love I Everywhere. love the way they say, if there's another pandemic. How yeah. often in the past have we had that? I mean, they're sort of once every hundred years. And, and global mm. pandemics are very extremely rare. Yeah. So uh, an, an educated person would think, how likely is it that we would have another pandemic? But we're being told, again, it's this mm. sort of propaganda that pandemics now are going to be quite regular. Yeah, they're putting this in people's minds, yeah. aren't they? I mean, I don't accept that there was a pandemic in 2020. It was flu that was rebranded, essentially. Where else. did all the flu go? Suddenly there was only 100 flu cases, <laughs> but then the number you had normally, 20 or 30,000, they were all COVID. So, you know, it's questionable anyway. We'll go and have a, we'll go and have a look at the, uh, at the, uh, the li little fountain yeah. here. <laughs> are you all right there, Julia? She's doing a marvellous job. <laughs> filming right. away. Um, the BBC cameramen will have to uh, watch their work. I know, this is skill Not here. that Julia would want to work for mainstream media. I can no, oh you. my God, you, you'd have to like, you'd have to shut your mouth on some things, wouldn't you? Talking <laughs> of mainstream media, that's a, that's a nice little, um, what do they call it, segue, isn't it? Mm. Um, do you appear much on main... I know you appear on GB News. Yeah. You but know. other... other Did the BBC ever ask you? No. I mean, the last time I was on the BBC was 2017, when I, I was... Um, I stood as a candidate in that election, that general election. But, um, but since then... I uh, haven't had anything from the BBC, not even as like um, leader of the Heritage Party, except their disinformation units, which accused oh, me of. I've got our refreshments <laughs> here. The oh, remains dear. of. Uh, a we'll bung them in the bin on the yeah. on the way back. Mm. Let's have a little sit down over here. Poor Julia's got to stand for a moment. She can lean against the fence. Oh yeah. <laughs> there we go. That's How nice. That? Yeah. So yeah. So mainstream media have. Mm. Um, They've sort of snubbed you a bit. Yeah, well, GB News has been good. I, yes. I'm, Michelle Jubry has me on the show like every month, and that's really good. She's really nice, and I like that. She said, uh, you know, we have a nice discussion there normally. But yeah, apart from that, I don't get on much. I've been on talk TV a couple of times, but I think that was to have someone to bash over the head because oh. I've got the wrong opinion about the Ukraine situation. Oh, yes. So I went in, and then there was like Piers Morgan on one side, Richard Tice on the other side, having a, you know, having an ambush of me. And trying to make me look silly but you know you can see that they didn't succeed <laughs> and i put my view across so what do you think of the reform party as a as the potential third party in the, in a next election do you think that mm. they've got the they got it i mean i know you're a separate party mm. but but and you're obviously going to have your own bias but <laughs> uh, it's just interesting to know i did interview richard tice mm. and he he wasn't i he seemed a nice enough man mm. But he seemed very much, this This is all I'm going to talk about. I'm not going to talk about anything else. I'm mm. on this remit. And, and I just came away, no disrespect to him and the party, but I don't know whether a party like that really is going to be... A, at the end of the day any different mm. from the rest you know you put me on the spot there because yeah. i don't i don't normally talk about other parties like that because you know well, don't, don't, but, but no i will i will because <laughs> it's a good question <laughs> you, you're giving me the opportunity so no i mean you know what i'd say is i i just like to talk about the heritage party and our manifesto because we've set out yeah. lots of positive principles and you look at reform and so on they don't have a full manifesto and they seem to just blow with the wind and look at what's popular and then talk about what 
what's popular, but there's a significant differences between them and us. I mean, they're not a socially conservative party. They're not pro-life like we are. They don't talk about traditional family values like we do and um, th that kind of thing. Um, they've taken completely the opposite view to us on the injections, the experimental injections. They think that they're a great thing. Uh, they were puffing them at the time when they came out when I, you know, I, I said... They did seem to... Do, yeah. uh, Richard Tice did seem to sort of jump on Andrew Bridgen's... Mm. I mean, he's yeah. the only one. Um, mm. I, I know on Talk TV he would sort mm. of saying, is there a problem with them? Mm. Um, but on the whole, um, it's, it's a difficult... Um, I think it's difficult when you're potentially about to go into the what should we say, the, the deep state of England mm. in that building, uh, you've probably got to sort of toe a certain line. Well, I don't. I don't. <laughs> no, no. no well, so what would happen? Let's, let's wave the magic wand. We're going to go and have a nice cup of coffee shortly. Um, what, let's wave the magic wand. You're now Prime Minister. Mm. Is that, is that a role you'd love to be? I would love to be Prime Minister. Good. Not, not because I want to be Prime Minister, because I want to sort our country out, because I love our country, and I can see it going to the dogs in so many ways. Uh, you know? I, well, I agree with you there. You know, so what someone, would you do? Your, your first week as um, PM? Stop the boats, stop RSC in schools. Um, so how, uh, would you, how would you stop the boats? Because they all say that, don't they? I yeah. mean, they keep old... Um, who is it now? It used to be uh, Pretty Patel, then it was Suella... Braverman, yeah. She's still in. Doing she's still the she's home still secretary there, now. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, they're like you know chess pieces. They just yeah. move around according to the, their whim. Um, so yes, they all keep saying, "Oh yes," and then Sunak said, "Oh, I've signed this thing. Mm. It's going to do." It. And we all know that. Are we, do they think we're thick that these things never change? So how yeah. would you? I mean, how would you actually stop them? It's very easy. I mean, you could go to B and Q or something and get a couple of grappling hooks and then just use them uh, to tow, tow the boats back. back to France. Until you start doing that, it's not going to change. It needs drastic action. Mike Graham. That's what they have to on, do. Mike Graham on Talk TV had a policy. I thought it was quite good. He would have a sniper who would shoot the rubber dinghies, not the people, mm. not the people. And so every time they sort of get into the dinghy, you just shoot it so that it's not inflatable. So they don't drown or anything because they're only in like a couple of foot of water. Mm. But it's almost as if you've got to sort of somehow stop the boats from even getting across our line. Yeah, well, well, you'd have to do that in France. Yes. And we've paid 200 million pounds or something like that to yes. France to do exactly that job. And they may do that, you know, once or twice a month. And then yes. they go, oh, there's a picture. They deflated a dinghy. We're doing all kinds We're of things. We're doing everything. But you know yeah. what? Those guys who are on the dinghy, they just go straight back onto the next one and just come across anyway. It's just an absolute farce. I mean, we shouldn't be giving France any money at all because they're not doing the job. Where's that money going? It's we, not we, going we, to anything. Well, we seem to be yeah. giving money left, right and centre yeah. to anybody else but our own country. Right, it's, right. That is so, appalling. So, OK, so you're going to stop the boats. What was the other thing you did? Stop the RSE that we talked about the relationships and sex education yes. you know there's all these kind of peripheral subjects which are actually promoting government agendas or the agendas of NGOs which are lobby governments to, to push these things onto schools you've got PSHE what is that personal social health and and education, there's citizenship, and there's RSE now, these superfluous subjects. They, they're not examined on, but they, the government sort of dumps all of the propaganda and ideology into these subjects, and then they go to ever younger children in ever more damaging ways. And you so just you need could to do get rid of all. On a, on a simple signature, yeah, couldn't you? Just take them out of yeah. the national curriculum. I mean, yeah. I, I don't think we actually really need a national curriculum at all. I mean, that was only introduced in 1988 when O levels were abolished, and then they brought in GCSEs. See, Julia's mm. taken her children mm. out of the education system yeah. because she's just not happy with not only the education but also mm. the stance that, that schools deal with children who might not fit in ordinarily mm. because it seems a narrower, a, a narrower uh, band that kids have got to somehow mm. get in. Would you... Um, would you support home education? Absolutely. You know, what they're trying to do at the moment is bring in registration for home education, which we've never had before. And, you know, back in the 60s, it was more sort of hippies that did home education, a very small number of people. My sister yeah. did it, and she was a bit hippie-like. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. Right. yeah that's Absolutely. great, you know. I mean, it's not what I would do, but go out and, you know, learn about trees and growing plants and stuff. It's all very good. Now there seems there's more Christians and more conservative people and people with traditional values taking 
taking their kids out of school because they don't want them indoctrinated Absolutely. with the cultural Marxist ideologies. And there's also people taking their kids out of school because there's so much bullying goes into school, you know, yeah. they, and they just can't, schools just can't deal with the bullying that goes on because there's extreme, you know, misbehavior happening now in a lot of places. And they're just not able to give the kids the support. I mean, I was a teacher for 20 years. It's a tough job because, you know, I'm going there to teach. I've taught chemistry because I've got a degree in chemistry. But then you're also expected to be a policeman, a social worker, a, yes. a psychiatrist, a, a pastor, a, and, you know, all these other roles on top of being a teacher. And at the end, it all, it all just collapses. Um, there's just too much to do. And then the government is piling, um, you know, programs on program on requirement on requirement every year to make a political point and so to get something in the media oh look we're doing this in schools but the people who actually have to implement it are the teachers and the schools yes they just can't cope with it no so uh, <laughs> you know we're gonna walk around because I want to end the video in front of the uh, little thingy there and yeah Julia's getting a bit tired <laughs> uh, uh, <her> <laughs> right um, so yeah we'll go yeah what about another question as Prime Minister? Mm. Um, the uh, we had a lot of strikes. I know I've not mm. to be honest, I don't watch mainstream media anymore, so I haven't really heard about much of these strikes mm. and things. And and it's only somebody telling me, oh, so if you're coming up to so and so, you've got to be careful because there's all these strikes. What would you do about the strikes that are going on? Well, you it? know, the root problem of this is inflation which is caused by massive financial incompetence and mismanagement. So for years and years, the governments, whether they're Labour or Tory, or Tory Lib Dem coalition, have been spending more than they get in because they've been wasting money, firstly on this net zero idiocy. Yes. And then also on the- We haven't the, touched on no, that. <laughs> no, that's a whole other issue, isn't it? Absolutely. And the, the COVID and the, the just money- just move they, over here, because yeah, we're going to yeah. get a lovely little shot, oh, yeah. hopefully, with the- uh, <laughs> oh, this faffing with the camera and, and doing an interview. <laughs> Severities, yeah. yeah. But you know, there's that, the net zero, the, the lockdowns, the, the billions and tens of billions they paid for injections. Now there's the situation with Ukraine. The sanctions on Russia have completely backfired because you know we we, we, we purchase we yeah, oh. yeah, on, on arms for Zelensky, but that's also, you know, we get fertilizer from Russia. It's the main provider of fertilizer. So now we haven't got enough cheap fertilizer for our food. We've got energy prices is going through the roof because that's you know um, had a massive impact on the European energy market all of these things have just not been for the benefit of the people so you're not going to get a situation where people are not going to go want to go on strike until you solve the fundamental crisis in financial mismanagement get inflation down and to do that we need to stop spending more than we bring in yes. well I, I understand workers saying well you know inflation is 10 percent you give us a 5% pay rise, that sounds good, but in real terms, it's a 5% pay cut in real terms. Because if your pay rise doesn't keep up with inflation, yes. you have less purchasing power. I mean, and, and the government goes, oh, well, we're so generous. We've given them 5% or 6%. But inflation's 10%, and so everyone's worse off. And they've got off. the money to support wars, yeah. and, 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 you know, they've got mm. the money to put people on furlough when they lock people yeah. down unnecessarily. Mm. So it, it does seem very mean of the government, mm. and, and their pretense to be generous with a 5% just seems mm -hmm. to be barking. Clearly, we need to get you in as PM as soon as possible, don't That we? would be great. <laughs> yeah, I would, you know, please, I, I want to sort this country out. I mean, heaven knows what will happen if we have another four or five years of Tory, Labour, Lib Dem, Green, SNP after the next election. So I'm doing all I can to build the Heritage Party. So, you know, if you're watching, please come and join us. Links will be in the description. <laughs> We're going to go and have a, a quiet cup of coffee now. The lovely Julia can rest yeah. her arms. Thank you, Julia, for filming. And thank you, David, for yeah. being my very special walkabout guest. Thank you. It's if been you've really enjoyed good. that, we're, I'll have to do it again with some other guests, which will be quite fun. Yeah. Uh, poor old Julia. <laughs> She'll have big biceps at the end of it. She's, she's doing yeah. this behind.
behind the camera. I can see. Yeah. So there we go. There she is. Power. Uh, yeah. Brilliant. Well, thank you, David. Thank really appreciate you. Thanks it. Thanks for having me on the show again. Pleasure. Yeah. Don't forget to uh, follow and subscribe and watch, um, watch not watch, click on the uh, Heritage Party link below and I'll be back with some more videos very soon. Till then, from David and I in Worthing, buy this, um, I don't even know what he is, he's kind of like Neptune. a Neptune, there we are, like mm. Neptune. We'll see you next time, bye bye for now. <laughs>